Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. And in this section, we're going to go over this. This section you can skip if you want. Uh, if you like math and you enjoy doing math type things, though, you probably don't want to skip this section just because it's interesting and it's it's useless. But hey, you know, really all of math is useless. It, if you find a use for math, you get famous for it, right? Uh, math is a game. It's fun. So this this section um, has to do with if you remember from Pythagorean's theorem, we discovered that three squared plus four squared is equal to five squared. And that's pretty cool. Like you have integer solutions to Pythagorean's theorem. The question is how many of those are there and how do we find them all, right? So it, it's, uh, it's not very trivial to do this, but here's a step that we can do. We can kind of think of, of what this looks like in terms of circles, right? So recall that uh, the circle equation is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to the radius squared and the center of the circle is the point a comma b don't forget to flip the signs okay all right so let's look at this equation let's start with a squared plus b squared equals c squared let's divide by c squared so we get a squared over c squared plus b squared over c squared is equal to one okay and we can simplify that a little bit further we can just call this a over c squared plus b over c squared, and that's equal to 1. All right. If a, b, and c are integers, then the quotients a over c and b over c are rational numbers. So if a, b, and c are integers, then a over c and b over c are rational. Remember, rationals are an integer divided by another integer. And so we can replace this. We can say x is equal to that and y is equal to that. So we can say x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, what's that? That's the equation for the unit circle, is it not? Okay. So now all we need to do is find all the points that's on the unit circle where x and y are both rational. All right. So he does this trick, and he doesn't really explain why he does this trick. He does explain later, but not immediately. He says, we're going to choose uh, a number t, can be any, uh, any integer, I think, any integer, yes, any integer, not any real. And then he says, suppose x is equal to 1 minus t squared, let's make that a little more pretty, over 1 plus t squared, and y is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared, then x squared plus y squared equals one, okay? And we can do the simple algebraic manipulation that he talks about. We'll do that right now. What kind of, I'll kind of, you probably wanna do this on your own, but you can do this easily. So we're gonna take x squared plus y squared equals one. We're gonna see if this is true. So we take one minus t squared all over one plus t squared. We're gonna square that whole thing. We're gonna take two t all over one plus t squared we're going to square that whole thing, see if that equals to 1. So 1 minus t squared squared. So we're going to have 1 minus 2 t squared plus t to the fourth, all over 1 plus 2 t squared plus t to the fourth. And we're going to add to that 4 t squared all over 1 plus 2 t squared plus t to the fourth. Okay, so the denominators are the same. We're just squaring them. The top side, 2t, we, we square the 2, we square the t, and then we take this multiply by itself twice. And we have to see if that equals to 1. Okay, So the denominators are the same, so we can just add the top. So we have 1 minus 2t squared plus t to the fourth plus 4t squared all over 1 plus 2t squared plus t to the fourth. We can combine this term and this term together, so we get 1 plus 2t squared plus t to the fourth all over 1 plus 2t squared plus t to the fourth. That has to equal 1. You can see here the solution that this, this indeed does hold true. There's only one case where this won't hold true, and that's where the denominator is equal to 0. So if 1 plus t squared is equal to 0, then it won't work, right? Because we're dividing by 0. So this won't work for that, OK? We're going to worry about it in a minute, but not right now. Okay, let's use an example. Let's say t equals 2. So we're going to get x is equal to 1 minus 2 squared, so 1 minus 4, 
over 1 plus 2 squared, which is 4. And then y is going to be twice 2, so that's 4, all over 1 plus 4. So we get x is equal to minus 4 over 5, and y is equal to 4 over 5. Okay? Minus 3, I'm sorry, minus 3 over 5, and y is 4 fifths. So these are indeed rationals. We take these and we square it around, and we're going to get um, x squared plus y squared. Is there room on the bottom? Let's scroll it up a little bit. Okay, x squared. So x squared plus y squared is equal to minus 3 fifths plus 4 fifths. So that's equal to 9 20 fifths plus 16 over 20 fifths. So we can see that 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. And sure enough, that's the 3, 4, 5. That's the 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So when we take t equals 2, we get 3, 4, 5. That's the one we already knew about. Okay, well, let's try t equals 4. So when t equals 4, we're going to get x is equal to 1 minus t squared, 1 minus 16, and 1 plus 16, because it's 1 plus t squared on the bottom. y is twice t, so that's 8 over 1 plus 16. So we get x is equal to minus 15 over 17, and y is equal to 8 over 17. And so we're going to work it out. So we're going to get x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, which it will be. So we get uh, 15 squared over 17 squared plus 8 squared over 17 squared. So it equals 1. So we have A equals 15, B equals 8, and C is equal to 17. This one will also work out. So 15 squared is 225, 8 squared is 64, 17 squared is the sum of those. I'm not even going to work that out for you. Okay? All right, so that, you can get a calculator and do that yourself if you want. Okay. Wait, 10 over 26. Did I do this wrong? T equals 4. Oh, T equals 5. Okay. T equals 5. We'll just do that in the margin over here. I'll just write it down for you. A is equal to 1 minus T squared, which is... Uh, 20, uh, that, let's take the squared, you know, whatever. So A is going to be um, the positive of this. Let's take absolute value of that. Huh. So we have 24. B is equal to twice that, 10. And C is equal to 1 plus that squared, so that's 26. Okay, and we can, we can divide these all by 2. So we can get A is equal to 12, B is equal to 5, and then C is equal to 13. Okay, so 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared I think is 169, I could be wrong. I think that's it. And so those should add up together as well. So there's another one. So we found three of them already very quickly using this formula. Okay, now that doesn't, uh, there's a little side note here that's hilarious. I think we should read this. How did we guess the formula expressing x and y in terms of t in the first place? Okay. And he said, the answer is, these formulas have been known for a long time. As far as I know, history does not tell us who discovered them first, but he was a good mathematician. And at this point, he goes into another conversation. What distinguishes someone with talent for mathematics from someone without talent is that the first person will be able to discover such beautiful formulas, and the second person will not. Okay, so... <laughs> However... Everybody is able to plug numbers in the formula once it is written down. That does not take much talent at all. <laughs> okay, so there's your analysis from Sergey Lang about what makes a good mathematician and what makes a great mathematician and what makes everybody else. So if you're able to discover formulas, you're a mathematician. If you're able to find elegant formulas, you're a great mathematician <laughs> with talent. If you're able to use mathematics, you don't have any talent at all. Okay, so... Anyway, let's do a theorem. Um, we haven't really proved that this is all the possible points that are rational. So we're going to do a theorem here. We're going to prove this from the ground up. Um, this, remember, theorem, theorem proving is kind of the bread and butter of mathematics. This is what mathematics is really about. So we're going to say let x comma y be a point um, satisfying the equation. Be a point satisfying uh, x squared equal to 1. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Such that x does not equal to minus 1. We're not going to consider that point. Okay? So everything except for x equals minus 1. 
let t equals y over x plus 1, then x is equal to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared, y is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared. Okay, and let's do the proof. This is how we got from here to there. So how we started with this and how we got to here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> multiplying both sides of the equation, t equals y over x plus 1 by x plus 1. So we, get, we take t, we multiply by x plus 1, we get y over x plus 1, that's the t, times x plus 1. So these terms cancel, and so we get uh, y equals t times x plus 1. Squaring both sides. So we get t squared times x plus 1 squared is equal to y squared. Okay. Then we can expand this out. y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. I just moved the x squared to the other side, so I had to flip the sign. So we get t squared my, uh, times x plus 1 squared equals y squared equals 1 minus x squared. Okay. And that's equal to a 1 plus x times 1 minus x. All right. So we see here we have an x plus 1 over here. We have an x plus 1 over here. Let's get rid of one of them. So we have t squared times x plus 1 is equal to 1 minus x. Expanding the left-hand side. So we're going to take this side and expand it. We're going to get x times t squared. He puts t squared x, whatever. Plus t squared is equal to 1 minus x. This, is this x term over here this t squared term over here, and then we're gonna get x t squared plus x is equal to one minus t squared, and then x times t squared plus one is equal to one minus t squared. Okay, next, dividing t squared plus one gives us our expression for x, so we get t squared plus 1 times x equals t minus 1, or 1 minus t squared, I'm sorry, 1 minus t squared, and then we divide both sides by t squared plus 1, so we get x equals 1 minus t squared all over 1 plus t squared. Okay? So we've done that for x. Now we remember that y is equal to t times x plus 1. That came from the very first equation. That came from very early on. It came from up here. If you remember, where did it go? I put it on the bottom foolishly. Y is equal to T times X plus one, right there. That's where it came from. He says, in an, in an easy algebraic manipulation, which we leave to you, we find the expression for Y, namely that Y is equal to two T all over one plus T squared. So he's gonna take X, he's gonna substitute that in. Let's do that right here. So let's take Y is equal to T times one minus T squared, one plus T squared, plus 1, okay, and then what we'll do next is we'll say y equals t times 1 minus t squared plus 1 plus t squared all over 1 plus t squared on both sides. So we're converting that 1 to a 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t squared, okay, and then when we add those two terms together, we're going to get 1 minus t squared plus 1 plus 2t squared, so we get 2 all over 1 plus t squared. And so then we end up with 2 times t on the top and 1 plus t squared on the bottom. That's very easy. Okay. And so we've proven our theorem. Okay. In theorem 1, suppose that x and y are rational numbers, then t equals y over x plus 1. So we can manipulate this. Um, that's what we got, actually. Yeah. t equals y over x plus 1 is also rational. If, if x and y are rational, then t rational. Okay, that's kind of the addendum there. About All right. But remember that we had x cannot be equal to minus 1 because we'd be dividing by 0. All right. So we have completely described the rational points in the circle or equivalent to the right triangles with integral sides. All right. Yes, I forgot about this part. This is cool. He says, what about x cubed plus y cubed equals 1? What are the solutions here? What are the pairs of numbers that will make this work, that are rational? Okay, well, we can choose x equals 0 and y equals 1 and get a solution. 
or x equals 1 and y equals 0. Those are solutions. But other than that, we can't find any other solutions. Okay. Now, you might have heard of Fermat's theorem. Fermat's theorem. It says that x to the k plus y to the k equals 1. Um, with positive x y, it is known for many values of k that there is no solution other than x equals 0 or x equals 1, but a solution in general is unknown. This is the famous Fermat problem. So you're basically saying when k is greater than 2, no solution but x equals 0 and x equals 1. Okay, And we don't know why this is. We've done lots of different numbers, but we can't, I don't think there's a solution to Fermat's theorem here. Um, and some, it's been rumored that uh, math professors will sometimes assign this problem as a homework problem to see what people come up with. And the students will come back and say, oh, I couldn't solve it. I spent all this time and I, I wasted 30 pages and I went down this path. And the professor will laugh at him and say like, yeah, well, if you found a solution, we'd publish a paper together. We'd claim a million dollar prize and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, famous theorem. A lot of fun to think about why this is and how it works. Um, you can read lots of different uh, takes on it. And I, I don't know at this time if there are solutions out there. There may be. There may be somebody that solved it with some complicated way. But again, the brilliant mathematician is going to have a simple solution, a simple uh, formula that does it. And I've heard of some very complex things to describe some aspects of this. But anyway, all right, exercises. Write down explicitly five examples of positive numbers A, B, C, such that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's number one, which have not already been listed in the text and which are not multiples of those already listed in the text. Huh, good luck with that. Have fun. Okay. <laughs> Two, uh, you might want to think of prime numbers. They're going to be important here because if you use a number that's a product of other numbers, then um, yeah, you'll, you'll see. Anyway, number two, prove that if S and T are real numbers such that zero is less than S, zero is less than or equal to S is equal to less than T, then this equation holds. Okay. So this is appropriate inequalities for the numerators and denominators before taking the quotient. So that's the hint to prove appropriate inequalities for the numerators and denominators before taking the quotient. Uh, what that means is you, when you can multiply this equation by the denominators, but you have to remember whether or not the denominator is positive or negative, because if it's negative, it will flip the sign. Okay. All right. And using the formulas this section, give explicitly, this is number three, uh, give explicitly the values of x and y as quotients of integers when t has the following values. So he gives you some um, non-integral t's, and you can find interesting solutions. Okay. And number four, when t becomes very large positive, what happens to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared? When, when t becomes very large negative, what happens to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared? And you can try putting in like 10,000 or negative 10,000 to get a feeling for what happens. Um, are you ready for an answer? No. Wait to calculus. You'll know exactly what happens. Number five, analyze what happens to 2t over 1 plus t squared y, basically, when t is almost, when t is less than or equal to zero and when t becomes very large negative. All right. And next, analyze what happens when t is greater than or equal to zero and t becomes very large positive. So there is a tendency for these numbers to tend towards certain values that may or may not be familiar if you paid attention to this last slide. Okay, and I think that's all for this section. Let me check if there's any more problems. That is all for this chapter, in fact. That was chapter eight. So in chapter eight, we have proven how we can take uh, real numbers and build geometry from scratch. And in, in the previous chapters, we've gone over some of the implications of geometry, how to use geometry. And so now we're at this point in our math career where we know that numbers are important. We know that they combine with geometry in an interesting way. And we see now why Pythagorean's theorem is so important. Anyway, guys, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. And bye bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.